So, last video we did nested loops, or uh, I did, you might not have watched the last video. And a nested loop is a loop inside a loop. A nested loop is a loop inside a loop. There can be several loops inside loops inside loops. Okay? So I'll just remind you that. I'm just going to show two use cases uh, of nested loops or um, two, two things you could use nested loops for just to give you some idea of why we might use them. Um, the first will be to do with lists and the second will be to do with times table. Or should I do times table first? You know what? I think I'll do times table first. So first we'll do a times table and second off we shall do... Um, lists yeah so we'll make a uh, I don't know we'll make a variable we'll call it times table and times table can be equal to 12 right and let's say I want to I don't know print out every single item in all of the times tables up to this number so I want to print the times table values of all the multiplications of one for one or whatever up to the timesing of itself okay so we can say i don't know oh let, let's say for the first 10 numbers okay so for i in range 0 to times table yeah and for i in range 0 to We'll say 12. We'll say 12. Or should we say times table? What should we say? Yeah, we'll say times table as well. Okay. So we'll say, oh dear, that needs a capital T. So that it's all consistent. What we're going to do here is there's going to be 12 loops here. And for each loop, there's going to be 12 loops here. Okay. And we're going to have I2. Yep. So we're going to say print the number uh, number whatever I will put that Sorry, I'm just having a hard time thinking of what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so we'll say that I plus 1. Um, put string of that. Uh, I plus 1 times by... I2 plus 1 yep just gonna put that there is number oops oopsie daisy is number Da, da, da. We'll say uh, plus da, 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 I2 plus 1 in the oops, I'm not good at this, am I? In the um. times table okay oh god god it's taken me a long time to do this i should really pre-plan all this but i just do it all on the fly because i just want people to see it so this should hopefully print out a bunch of times table stuff i'm just going to run it just to see if it works uh it has worked i just need to space it a bit better so 
1 is number 1 in the 1 times table, 2 is number 2 in the 1 times table, very good, and 2 is number 2 in the 2 times table, 4 is number 2 in the 2 times table, 6 is number 3, and it, it basically just goes through the times table of every single number from 0 to 12, essentially, yeah? That's, that's all we're doing here, that's all we're doing here, and we're going to times it by 12, yeah? I just need to uh, separate these, and so I'll just do that again, just so it's a bit clearer. Right, so basically, when the first loop actually uh, runs, or the first iteration of the first loop runs, every single, the first number that we want is number one, and we want all of the values of the one times table um, up to 12 times 1 okay so that'll be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 yeah 1 times 1 1 times 2 uh, 1 times 4 and 4 is the fourth number in the 1 times table if you times 1 by 4 you'll get 4 and that would be the fourth uh, multiplication if we're you know multiplying uh, 1 by 1 at a time right then we end up in uh, the second iteration here second iteration of the first for loop we go through uh, 12 iterations here and we do the two times table for all the values of 2 multiplied by 1 up to 2 multiplied by 12 and we do that for every number from 0 to 12 because times table is of value 12 right and as you can see here for 16 is number 4 in the 4 times table, that's right, 4 times 4 is 16, 20 is number 5 in the 4 times table, 20 times 5 is, uh, 5 times 4 is 20, you know, you see what I mean, you can see that we're producing a times table, right? Now if I change this number to 11, what you'll get is a range of numbers from 1 uh, to 11, you'll get the times tables of 1 to 11, times up to a maximum of 11 so you'll get 1 times 1 up to 1 times 11 2 times 2 up to 2 times 11 and we'll get that all the way up to 11 times 11 right and this you know up oh, yeah sorry i need to reset that this is essentially you know just another way of using or just a way of using a nested loop i'm just going to copy and paste that so that you can see the two different ones and so that when you guys come to looking at the github code you can run the two different versions and see exactly what the difference is there so that's one reason uh, why you might want to use a nested loop to produce something like this okay another reason we why we, we might want a nested loop is possibly to print out or analyze things inside of lists um specifically lists inside of lists so we'll say that our list is equal to we'll put five values in it we'll put and they'll all be lists okay so we'll put a list of one two three doesn't really matter what values they have in them um i'm just going to copy and paste that actually a couple of times so copy and paste uh, copy and paste and then I'll copy and paste that okay so we now have a list with five items in starting at index 0 all the way to index 5 all right Let's say I want to analyze, I want to print out every list item and every list item inside of that list item, okay? So I want to print out this list here inside of my list and then I want to print out every item inside the first item I printed and then I want to print this whole thing out and then every item inside of this, okay? I'll show you what I mean. So let's say for i in range uh, 
zero to five, okay? Because there are five items, so you know we want to get index whatever, whatever. Yeah, we will then say for we'll we'll print. Sorry, we'll print our list i. So we'll print whatever index number corresponds there to i, and then we'll say for i two in range zero to three because every single list item uh the list that contains three values so we can iterate for it three times that should be fine i don't know why it isn't it is print our our list i i2 okay so let's try it let's just load in our list as well and we get these uh values here okay so that's absolutely brilliant you know we've got all these values printed out so we printed out each item in the list because this list each list inside the list is technically an item and we printed each item inside each item in the list here. So that's great. We can see that we can get the individual values from each list item within the main list. And we can also get the lists, the individual, the, the, the list items inside the list and the list items inside the list inside the list. So we can get all of this, okay, with this sort of algorithm. So that is the other use for it. Now I'm gonna show you that this algorithm I've made isn't the best. Um, not to make myself look uh, like a bad programmer, um, just to show you how important it is to think about the way in which you structure your code. So we're actually gonna put for i in range zero to five, okay? Print our list. And we're going to put i and then we're going to put for i2 in range 0 to 3 we're going to print our list i i2 this time it's not going to work and that's because i'm going to delete this here so that's going to get killed off and i'm going to delete this here right and we'll get an out of index uh, warning here we'll say that the list is out of index yeah that's right list index out of range so the reason why that is is because this range i is zero to begin with uh it's two one two three and then four it doesn't never becomes five but it becomes four now there is no index four here there's a fourth item but index four would actually be the fifth item and because that doesn't exist, our algorithm is telling us to look for that fifth item. But the problem is it doesn't exist here. So this list index is out of range, right? So what we actually want to do is we want to put for i in range, yeah? For i in range of length of our list, okay? Now this should work. This this is fine. We'll still come into problems here, and I'll explain why in a minute. It's the same reason we came into problems to begin with. And now you'll see, actually, so the first list index was out of range here. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's out of range there first. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is still out of range because we're saying for 0 to 3 print out the item of i so let's say i is zero and then i2 so zero one two this will go to but this one here zero one and two there is no index two there is no third item so it's out of range here okay so what we actually want this to be is length of our list i Okay, this should work now. If it doesn't, there's no point in me being a programmer anymore. 
and yeah it's basically worked so the reason I show that and it's not to confuse you it's just to show that you know you should pay some attention to the way that you create in your algorithms and I thought I'd mention it in the middle of a loop inside a loop kind of video um as far as the practicalities of just making loops inside loops and uses you don't actually need to think about this algorithm this sort of catch-all algorithm uh, but you do need to think about this kind of thing um the, the sort of use cases that you'd have for using um, loops inside of loops essentially um yeah that's that's pretty much all i'll write up a few comments on these just to show you what the use cases are and um yeah i'd follow along maybe make a few of your own exercises i think i will do one practice activity after this and that should be the end of the loops altogether anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed